So what you got planned for your big day? Nothing, I guess. Come on, man. It's big two five. I don't really care about any of that. My brother's birthday's in two days. We're gonna throw him a little surprise party. Gonna need you all there. You in or not? Full payment in cash. We'll forward the job. It's a fake kidnapping for a surprise birthday party. It's not a drug deal. Target the CEO of Robert Chang. I know that family got back. First we secure him, then we go for a safe. And uh, <laughs> you don't have to be gentle with him. I can't wait to see the look on his face. Surprise! Oh! Where are you? We don't want any complications. Bitcoin, man, we gonna turn it up. It's like millions, bro. Oh, Escape from the trunk. What? Surprise! Call the cops. This is it for me. I thought that we were all in this together. Put your hands up! It's about to get crazy. What are you gonna do? Fix your screw-ups, like I always do. Robert! No! Seth. Yeah, obviously. Hey, have, hey man. Obviously, there's a cast and crew involved. They're all doing hard work, but... When you put writer, producer, actor, and I don't know, maybe I don't know, maybe you did the the catering as well. I don't know what, how many <laughs> jobs you had. How in the world, Seth, were you able to? Do you have the Calm app on your iPhone? What do you do to just alleviate your stress? Because you're wearing, I mean, you're not even wearing many hats. You're the you're the actual manufacturer of the hats on, on this project. How do you, how, how did you do it? Yeah, so. <laughs> It's funny. I mean, if, if people only really knew that things kind of, you know, things, you know, like post-production was a little bit uh, of a rough patch. I pretty much also hired everyone in post-production. So it's like, if people only knew that, like I, like I did way too much, I, I will say for certain. And I, I hope that I've proven that I can do something good and, and I can do less on the next one, but I, I'll do as much as I got to do to make my movie. But yeah, for sure. It's, um, I'm a, I'm a high energy person. You know, I like to get things done and, and I'm a firm believer. If, 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 if someone's not going to do it for you, I'm, I'm going to do it for myself. So yeah, I, I just, I just, I just, I don't know how I stay calm. I mean, it's, it was, it was hard. It was hard. I mean, I would just say exhaustion, like I'm really tired at the end of the night. So I have to sleep, but also like, if, like my, my character's in really good shape in the movies. I'm also like eating super healthy and working out every morning before going to set. It's just like, I don't really feel, have the energy to do that, but I'm doing that. Um, so I don't, I don't really know. Uh, maybe I will download the Calm app since you suggested it. <laughs> you know, with Take the Night, you could have, as a filmmaker, as a director, Seth, you could have easily made this a guilty pleasure heist thriller where it's just take it's just a superficial look at the genre yeah. and it would have worked it still would be fine but can you just talk about going deeper into the story and why you know i'm, I'm thinking of something like michael mann's heat and thief it, w growing up were you really influenced in the heist genre and but then you realize there's a lot more behind the curtain that you wanted to explore like these previous films i mentioned and not make it just a superficial entertainment well Yes, 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 yes. I've seen all those movies and, and I love Christopher Nolan and I think his movies are on some really deep psychological, but he also goes into like Inception. The thing that people won't even think about is the relationship between Leo and his wife in the movie and like how like that really pushes the story forward and like really makes us empathize with Leo's character, Cobb. You know, it's, it's really at the heart of it, like a love story. And, and that really pushes things forward. Um, it makes you really want to stay with the character. So, yeah, I, I've never, I don't like surface level stuff, you know, and and maybe when I was younger or whatever. But I think the deeper stuff is what really connects you with the characters, those little moments in the movie that for people when they see it. They don't know and it just kind of hits them even me when i watch it and like and i'll be seeing a scene and I'm like wow it hits me like oh wow oh, that, that connects with me and i know if it connects with me and i've seen it a hundred times i know it's connecting with someone else because it's it's human like these movies where everyone's just dying and this and that it's cool at the end of the day people want to sometimes just check out 
they want to have fun and they want to enjoy it. And I'm not going to sit here and bash anybody's movie. What I'm saying is I want something deeper. And and all, all my concepts sound like surface level, kind of tacky, comedy thriller-ish type movies. But they're like my next one, if I told you the title of the next one, you'd be like, oh, that sounds like a comedy. But it's not like there's really deep layers and it gets really dark in moments. But it but it's still a, a good, fun movie and, and, and things are happening. Yeah, when you were writing this idea about you know, the importance of family and bonds and ultimately accountabil- accountability, did those themes work your way just from page one or did you grow into just evolving the story? Because I really loved how the family element dynamic and accountability really plays an important part of your, your narrative. It evolves. You, you're a boy and you become a man and, 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 and you go through things. And I'm one of eight kids. So a, a big thing that would keep coming up in, in, in drafts, like, why why are all these grown men living with their brothers? Like, well, because I'm a grown man. I live with my brother. Like, people just, like, didn't understand. Like, that's weird. Like, why are these rich guys living together? And it's just like, if I become rich, I would be more than happy to move in my brothers. Like, it's just, it's just how I am. You know, like, of course, being from a big family and, and there's just so many dynamics, you know, the way you're raised, the, 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 the things that you're interested in. And it's just really important. And I just think that's what really makes the movie. Like, I think people are going to like see the trailer, hear the concept. And they're going to, I hate to say it, even for my own movie, I think a lot of people are going to just automatically assume, oh, this is going to be surface level cheesy. And I really do hope that people are pleasantly surprised, you know, because I, I just, I just hope so. On a selfish level, I've been doing this for over thirty years, and it's great to see whenever, whenever a narrative has two Asian actors pretty much at the forefront. I mean, is is that another cool part of you as a filmmaker? Because you're you're doing the casting, you can actually have really a diverse cast in in your narrative. And is it also cool that now that it's not a, maybe it's, it's still a big deal, but this would have been a huge deal back in the nineties. You see what I'm saying? But how yeah. important, yeah. How important was it for you just to actually have diverse casting in, in your film, which I really appreciated. Um, so first of all, I, I want to say that it definitely makes me feel good that like, you know, certain communities feel good that they're feeling represented. You know, um, I will be honest that that wasn't necessarily my goal. Like, you know, my, I'm not like, as you can see in my movie, it's, it's I'm not like a socially conscious, just filmmaker i i just want to make a good movies that i like and if and if that affects people in a positive way and obviously i'm all for that but i'm from queens new york it's it's statistically the most diverse place on earth so these people are based off of friends and family like todd is my brother todd and my character chad is my brother chad and you know like you know like they're they're based off of people i know like 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 they like like the 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 guy that came up, I brainstormed this idea with two friends. One of them was Asian and he played the guy we kidnapped. So guess what? He's the guy we kidnapped in the future. So like, I just think it feels natural because it is natural. This isn't force. This isn't like, okay, the quota, we got to put these guys here and those guys there. And we have to make sure we make every community happy. It's like, if you actually do it organically, it's not going to feel forced. And I think that's the beauty of it. And, and I don't, Personally, unless someone's playing a sibling and then just, you know, and they have to be a certain thing, like I don't really care, you know what I mean? Like, you know, like it, I don't like I'm not like like there's a role in the movie that we thought was gonna be like an old white guy and he happened to be a black guy. I don't like I don't as long as you're the best for the role, I'm I'm happy. And once he was, once I decided he I he was gonna be Asian, obviously, then I Chinese, uh, then I then put like little tidbits in there that Chinese people would see and appreciate. And obviously they have to see the movie and see it, but there are little things that I was aware of, like little, you know, like cultural things that normal people like a white guy or whatever would know about, but they're going to see it and they're going to appreciate like, Oh wow. He he, he did some homework on our culture. So once I made that decision, I'm going to respect the culture and, and do it to the best of my ability. You know, so speak, speaking of culture, my my aunt to this day she lives she lives over in over in Jackson Heights, and that's where my mother and father met. And I I, I didn't say I, I lived in Queens for about a couple of years when I was a kid, when I was five or six. But I, this question will probably you'll take an hour to answer. But just just from the top of your head, organically, how did growing up in Queens really influ- influence you as a storyteller? I mean, I'm sure that's very hard for you to answer. No, I mean that's that's I mean, look, that's a great 
but it's a great question. I mean, like if you're from not from New York, then then, then you just don't know. Like there's just like, you know, people probably wonder why people from New York are so obnoxious and this and that. Like you you just don't know. Like just 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 hop in your car and going for a ride. It's just it's it's an extreme experience. Like people are gonna be beeping, people are not gonna let you get into the lane. They're gonna everything is aggressive in New York. It's it's just it's just like it's just, it's just that type of place. So when you see the movie and you see the characters and they kind of got like this, you know, like the Shannon character, and he's like kind of like, you know, he's aggressive, and then the Todd character, and and like that's just New York. There's just New York grit and it's, and it's cool. And there's culture and there's, and like you said, there's diversity. Like, I mean, if I was from Nebraska, maybe the characters would be different. You know what I mean? Like, but these are based off of real people, real friends and real characteristics. Like I can't help the people that I know and grew up with, like, you know, and of course it affects me in every way. Like, I, I you know, I sometimes hate New York, but I, I also love it. And, yeah, Queens is literally statistically the most diverse place in the world. So, I mean, where better to grow up to get to know all different types of cultures? I mean, literally, just on my block, I mean, I could point each direction. Just in my block, it's all different people. So, it's like, it's amazing. Like, it just, it's cool. Yeah, I, I don't know if there are cheat codes to this, but I, I know 20, 10, or 30 years in the future, you're going to be in some college and you're going to be talking to students on how in the how in the heck were you able to actually get this uh, project mounted just right now in the present what is the key element for you because when people understandably complain like oh i didn't grow up in a, i'm not i didn't grow up in a, a rich family i didn't grow up the son of a film professor or or a producer what was the key for you just to do all of these things and big dream these big dreams where you, you know mm-hmm. odds are against most people of doing it um i just think that's the person that i am you know, like I, I'll, I'll die before I give up. I just like, like I'd rather fail a thousand times and not try. Like I, I remember my older brother's friends, like when I was an adult and they were hanging out talking, they're like, man, you were so odd. I'm like, uh, as a kid, I was like, okay, why? So like, like, you know, cause I'm, there's five boys in my family and I'm the youngest. So like, there's the older, two cooler ones and then my older two brothers are more normal. And then me, who's, you know, the artist, whatever. So like the older ones would bring friends and then the two middle one, the two ones right above me would be hanging out. And they're like, Oh, your, your brothers would be hanging out with us. And you'd be walking around the backyard, looking up at the star at the sky. And like, I didn't know this about myself, you know, like, I just, it's cool when you hear these things that how you were as a kid before you even know your own nature. I just dreamed big, man. Like I thought I was going to be an NBA. I practiced like crazy. I didn't make the uh, the high school team in 10th grade. I was so mad. I practiced like crazy. I came back. I didn't make JV in 10th grade. I made varsity in 11th grade. And what? I want to be better in 12th grade. So I bought jump soles and I worked out every day the whole summer. I never had a trainer. I never like, I've, I've literally always done everything myself my entire life because, you know, when you have eight kids, your parents don't actually have enough time for each of you. So you learn to just be really independent. So I just I'm like extremely independent. I'm going to the park by myself every day, playing basketball. So the same with the movie, man, like it's so hard to make a movie, but you just keep going and keep going and keep going and just promise yourself that you won't give up on yourself because if you give up on you, then I can assure you that everyone else will too. Superficial question. What position did you play in basketball? And are you a lifelong Knicks fan? And because I'm as a lifelong Clippers fan, I, I understand alcoholism. So I just want to, you know, for you, just those questions. You haven't seen my movie if you ask the question about the Knicks. So I'm not even going to answer that. Oh, you I know, did. You, I did well, see then, it. If you heard the derogatory comment, then you know I'm not a Knicks fan. I'm, I missed um, that derogatory he, comment thing. Well, he said, he said, he said, oh, um, he said when he was like, um, your opinion doesn't matter. He said, why? Because you're a Knicks fan. Obviously, insinuating <laughs> that the Knicks aren't good. I shouldn't yeah. be saying too much out loud, but whatever. Yeah, well, yeah. I remember that. Yes. <laughs> so listen, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to be honest. It's not that I'm not a Knicks fan. Like, I'm not a hater. I'm a player fan. I grew up loving Michael Jordan. And honestly, right now, my favorite player is Steph Curry. So I want to see him succeed. I, I, I don't know. The concept of being for a t- team is cool, but it's not for me. Like, they're the New York Knicks, but they're not from New York. These guys are from everywhere. They're all over the world. So it's just like, I guess I'm supposed to support it because they're in New York. I support the players I like. I love Jordan. I supported Jordan in the Bulls at the time. I like Curry. I'm super happy he won. 
You know what I mean? Like, and for me, Curry, I'm always for him because he's like the same eight, literally the same year born, same height, same weight. I always tell people like, I'm Steph Curry, just like, he's like a thousand times better than me. Just like a thousand times better. Yeah. Uh, final couple of questions, Seth. Just wondering, right off the top of your head, can you name one of your all-time favorite films? And what is it about this specific movie that still resonates with you? Memento. I mean, that's, I don't even have to think. I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's Christopher Nolan's second feature. It's his first bigger budget feature. It's so incredible. If you haven't seen it, it's the, this, the movie goes backwards. Uh, have you seen it? Yeah, yeah. I did, I'm so old, I did the press junket. So I'm, I'm that old. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and it sounds so jealous. Um, I, I, I just love that movie. What a passion. I love Christopher Nolan. I think Christopher Nolan is is the reason why I admire him so much is he does these big concepts that like could easily come off cheesy and tacky, but he makes them deeper and darker. And that's what I want to do. I want to do these bigger concepts that that you think are all cheesy, but I want to make them deeper and darker and more personal so you can connect with. Memento is just a work of art. Everyone I meet, I say, you have to watch it, man. I would like, I would tell you to watch that before you watch my own movie. I am not biased to my self at all you need to watch memento people if you're watching this please go watch it right now and you'll thank me yeah so my how about qu- you hold on how about you what's your favorite movie uh, i love this movie I, i'm a big hitchcock fan so i love vertigo citizen kane i'm one of those yeah and i love i love your guys like scorsese and sydney lumet all those films from yeah. new york and before you before you go in the next couple of weeks after after all the promotion is done and after you see all the reviews and hopefully your film does well and everything I hope they're good Yes, pina coladas on the beach for about a couple of months. Or are you ready to? Are you just so amped that you're hit, gonna take the camera, hit the ground running, and for for another project? Where, where will you? Where was your mind gonna be? <laughs> so okay, so this is the craziest summer of my life. On May thirtieth, it was my girlfriend's birthday, and I proposed to her in Hawaii. And my movie is coming out on July eighth, and we're getting married on my birthday, August fifth, in St. Thomas. So. I don't, yeah, yeah, I mean, the whole thing is a celebration. I don't really, destination wedding, destination engagement, movie, like, yeah, I mean, there's, there's no time for chill. I'm living life. I'm living life now. And I think that's the celebration that I'm having at this point in my life. I have a movie. I'm in love. I'm getting married. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm blessed, man. I'm, I'm just super blessed. Yeah. Really enjoyed your film, Seth. Thank you so much for your time. Also, great. You mentioned Nolan. I saw a lot of that. That kind of flourishes towards the third act. Really great job editing uh, on, on that on your narrative as well. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be I'll be waiting for your review. Oh, okay, okay. Eyes out. All right. Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thanks, man. Take care.